Boo! <laughs> How interesting. Uh, we haven't done a live in no, ages. We no. have had a couple of Zoom conversations. Yes, sometimes. we have. Yes, Thomas. And for me, this is my first live in quite a while. So, I'm so excited to have a conversation with my lovely dear friend Kerry today. Hello everyone. From Galartic. Galartic, yes. And we uh, want to talk about your work uh -huh. as an artist. Yes. And also how did this beautiful being come to life? Merlin. Merlin, the wizard. What do you want to talk about first? Let's talk about what what is um, what inspired you to do the artwork the any artwork. kind of artwork. any kind of artwork it was well at school i enjoyed art mm -hmm. and obviously life got in the way gone through life and it wasn't until i really woke up to who i truly was i just wanted to pick up a paintbrush so I picked up a paintbrush and from there it just developed and I started going into the sacred geometry because I love sacred geometry. See, this is where it really becomes very, very interesting, mm -hmm. the sacred geometry. And we'll come back to yeah, that in yeah, a minute. we will. So there's sacred geometry in my artwork, but I also use a crystal mix. So I am pulled intuitively to crystals that are used specifically for that sacred geometry. I cleanse them, etc. And then I ask permission of that crystal to crush it into a mix. Wow. And I place that crystal mix in my artwork. So I don't know if you can really see it here. So there's like a crystal mix of over like 50 crystals that's in this painting in sacred geometry. It's pretty cool. You have made a, a Kerry has made a video of the process. Yes, I've made a video so of it. Yeah. I will link it again um, in the comments or after we put this video up. Mm -hmm. So Okay, um, now what I'm fascinated about is, did you actually have a vision of how it's going to look or how did, how did Merlin come about? So Merlin came about, when I started open, opening my third eye intuitively, I started getting vision, visions of what future paintings would look like or paintings that I should be doing would look like. So I seen this painting and I doodled this painting in my visual book about two years prior to painting Merlin. Wow. And then intuitively I felt it was time to paint him. And then it, I felt intuitively who the painting was to go to. So I go with flow when it comes to the paintings and I just feel called right now it's time to get that painting out now it's time to get that painting into the collective that energy that frequency that vibration it's time and what's really interesting about the paintings is that they bring a healing yes yes into the energy field but also into the collective about certain aspects so if you look up Merlin and the history of Merlin um you'll notice that there's some emotions with regards to that and I need to say anymore. <laughs> yes, yes. And uh, like I said before, Merlin for me has always had a special, a special place without actually even knowing years and years ago what I'm going to get myself into mm -hmm. thinking about Merlin energy. And I didn't know what Merlin energy really means, but the figure of Merlin has always been with me for a very long time. Thank you everybody for joining us. I haven't got my classes. Can we say hello to everybody? Hello! If you have any questions, please write the questions and let's see if you can answer them. Yeah. So, but what I would like to know is, can you share with us a little bit about the sacred geometry okay. that is in the background of the actual picture? So, tell us a bit about the flower of life, for example. So, the flower of life is literally a symbol. If you go back through history, if you go to Egyptian, if you go to the Mayan, there's all this symbol, and it's flower of life. And it is a huge part of the creation of life. Mm -hmm. Some people like to call it the, the flower, the sacred flower, okay? The creation, the flower of life. Um, <clears throat> and it holds a frequency and a vibration. So if you look at, how can I put this in simple terms? 
if you look at the makeup of the universe mm -hmm. and how that comes together in a geometric way, a geometric pattern, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you will see like the energy lines, the earth grid, etc. It's very much like this. So basically, with any sacred geometry, the way I understand it is that all of the sacred geometry has been perceived on the level of the consciousness it, yeah. of people who have sort of had a more intuitive way of mm -hmm. being, who were connected with their what we would call higher self. So as soon as we tap into consciousness, visions start to come in mm -hmm. and the energy and the frequency of the universe can be represented mm -hmm. through all the different geometrical forms and everything has got its meaning yeah. and that's how you would place the flower of life, the flower of life. in in a mm -hmm. simple in another way um what i remember is when i first started meditating there was something called primordial sound technique which was basically a specific meditation practice that you use to start to connect to your own consciousness and by going through your own consciousness you started to open the sensory pathways up mm -hmm. to listen to the sound of the cosmos the sound of the universe mm -hmm. and that's the primordial sound of nature and the most commonly known sound of course is the sound om mm -hmm. aum a u m mm -hmm. not o m which is the beginning of creation, continuation of creation, creation. and then mm. the dissolving of the creation, and then this whole process starts again. So we have spoken about <clears throat> the flower of life. There are these symbols as well, mm -hmm. the swirly ones. The swirly ones. So you could say that's like the Fibonacci sequence. Again, the creation, it's in absolutely everything. Yes. But the, if I can show you, excuse me guys. Right. So if you look at the painting, you might not be able to see it here. <clears throat> so if you look at the time lapse, there's also a Celtic cross, but these symbols here are also in relation to the Avalon period. So if you look up Avalon, guys out there, if you look mm -hmm. up the Avalon period, this is called the Trifecta, mm -hmm. the Trifecta, yes. the Syrian seal, the exactly. Syrian aspect, which is in connection to Merlin, Camelot, Excalibur, Arthur's Stone. So what happens, like you were talking about this consciousness. Okay, I am drawn to, again intuitively, to the geometric patterns that need to be used in these paintings. To When they come into the painting, there's a reason why, because yes. they're bringing a healing. They're bringing some form of frequency into the energy field. So you don't even have to be in the painting's presence to yeah. feel it. Yeah. You can feel it just by looking at it because it holds a frequency. Exactly. It holds a vibration. And you know what is very fascinating? Because even weeks before you started with the geometry of mm -hmm. the piece, our friend Joanne did an activation process and it was exactly that symbol yeah, that trifecta. was part of my activation process which was visually seen in the energy field. And that's when I said to you, oh my gosh, when I saw the draft or mm -hmm. the initial outline of the sacred geometry, I said this is exactly what, what we, we saw. And then we also have got the Celtic cross in here. Mm -hmm. So now, of course, with any of those symbols, they can be used for a positive, um, life-enhancing, um, energetically uplifting purpose, or they can be reversed. So can you just sort of comment a little bit about the Celtic cross and what its original use was for? The Celtic cross and its original use? Oh, good question. Now you've stumped me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very difficult to make this. Ah, oh, when I do these paintings, it's almost like I don't have to think about it. I just yes. have to do it and yeah. I'm guided to do it. Yeah. So there's not really a thinking or, you know, process that goes behind it. I do a little bit of research in terms of Merlin and what the collective has said about Mer Merlin and history. And then I go into 
my perspective Good. of that. Yes. Okay. The point. This is a very important point because you may read a lot about certain symbols and certain uh, sacred geometry. My view is that in the end, it comes. What is your interpretation of the symbol? Mm -hmm. What is your inner standing, what you call it, inner mm -hmm. standing of the symbol? How do you use it? It's all about intention. Yeah, it is intention. Absolutely intention. So what I felt with the Celtic cross and why that had to be used in the painting, is there some form of aspect in terms of Merlin and the history of Merlin, his belief system, his consciousness and... Christianity, that sort of thing, but the Celtic side of it, because that Celtic history, that Celtic knowledge, there was a lot of trauma. If you look at the the history of the Celts, yeah, there's a lot of trauma there. So, <clears throat> the reason why I felt called to put the Celtic cross in there was because I was pulling forward healing of all lifetimes through all space, time, and dimension to heal on a certain level because we because we have this energy field yeah. and because it's like a sponge and it goes everywhere with yes. us regardless of how many incarnations we have on this planet that's yeah. just what i believe okay yeah. Yeah. um that frequency that geometry that crystal mix is like literally sending a signal into your energy field to shift that now to heal yeah. that yeah. to start working on yourself and start to because if, if you if I think about Merlin for myself, it's all about alchemy, mm -hmm. transformation, mm -hmm. about um, changing one situation into another situation. Mm -hmm. So, like working with base metals and turning them into gold. Mm -hmm. So basically, working with your own denser energies within your physical body mm -hmm. and transforming them into higher frequency. Yeah. So and the um and and anybody in the audience you you probably sort of if you feel into energy and if you open yourself up to sort of tune into the energy it is a very very powerful uh, frequency that is emanated from it mm -hmm. and it can be quite intimidating um but if if for example people have a certain response to certain of your artworks mm. some people they fall in love with it they just embrace it they mm. go to bed with it mm. they sleep with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no i'm just kidding i know you can i put it on pillows <laughs> <laughs> so so what would you say if you have some kind of response because these works they can trigger something yeah they can they so can trigger what does something. it mean if they trigger something it obviously means if you're triggered or if you're feeling something when you look at this painting, you're ready for that, okay? You're ready for that shift in your energy. You're ready for that transformation. You're ready for that growth, Yeah. okay? So the trick is, and what I say to people that look at these paintings and feel something, is to feel it, is not to be scared of it because your soul is crying out for that change, for that transformation, I would rest, I would feel absolutely everything that you're feeling, I would cry, I would, you know, you might feel joy, you might feel like going to the church and praying, whatever, whatever you're feeling called to do when you look at this painting, just just allow it, don't repress it because if you repress it, it'll keep coming to the forefront until you start w working on it. So this is the whole thing with shadow work and mm -hmm. we have had this conversation before, it's like, um, Mm. it helps us it basically shadow work stretches us mm -hmm. back into alignment which basically means is we are being pushed to sort of sit in an uncomfortable space mm -hmm. until we become totally comfortable within being uncomfortable yeah and that brings us back into alignment and helps heal any kind of trauma any kind of patterns that we carry any kind of belief systems, thought processes, for example, oh, I'm not good enough or any kind of um, emotions such as fear, anxieties, mm -hmm. they all have their origin within the physical body. So simply by looking at an artwork like that, it can actually trigger <sighs> those 
yeah. energies, those denser energies to pop to the surface mm -hmm. for it to be released. So now we have got the choice. We can resist to look at them. Mm -hmm. So whatever we resist, of course, it persists. Um, but we can also allow it to transmute and transform. Mm -hmm. And if you think about Merlin, transformation, sacred geometry, alchemy, mm -hmm. it's all about transformation. Transformation. And change. Yeah, it's transformation and change. And before I work on or start on these paintings, I go through the emotions mm -hmm. of what that painting is going to create within people's energy fields. So what happened when you went through this? Can you tell us a bit about your process? <laughs> there was a lot of shadow work that went on behind the scenes. Can you sort of share? There was a lot of belief systems re with regards to myself, with regards to the self-love, with regards to believing in myself. Mm. I had to let go of certain aspects of trauma in relation to my mother, my mother wound, that feminine energy. It was um, not being fearful of stepping into who I truly am and allowing myself to be seen. Yeah. And it's interesting because as I was doing this painting, I was like, I don't know if I have the capability to do this painting. Like there was a lot of resistance. Like, I don't know if I can paint Merlin. And even when I was painting Merlin, I was like, oh my God, I hope he doesn't look like a Merlin from Wish. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like even, even when I started him, I was panicking going, oh my God, it looks like Merlin from Wish. And I was like, oh my God, it looks like he's been on a massive bender. Like, <laughs> But I had to trust in the biggest lesson that an energy that I felt before this painting was complete was the the power of trust and flow yeah. and allowing yourself just to do what you need to do, not question anything. Yeah. And that's been a big, big lesson. Yeah. And also, um, this is in general, I believe, mm -hmm. with artwork in general, it is not so much the actual physical appearance of the artwork. No. It's the energy, it's the, the frequency energy. Yeah. that actually is emanated or emanates from mm -hmm. that artwork that is crucial. Yeah, it's crucial. And when I was painting this beautiful painting, even, even I'm like, did I paint that? <laughs> um, <laughs> the energy of Merlin... I could feel his energy yeah. watch me paint. So it's yeah. almost like I was being guided by the man himself, who, by the way, <laughs> was very grumpy kind of energy when he came in. And then by the time we finished, I think he got fed up with me. He was used to my my absolute cheek. <laughs> 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 so we became, we became buddies. So... It was an absolute beautiful experience painting this painting. It was one of the most powerful paintings that I've ever created. And, you know, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't been to art school. I haven't done an art degree. I'm not, you know, qualified artist if you want to put a label on it. I literally just channel mm. energy and transmissions and this is what is created when mm. I do that. I haven't... Mm. Mm. It's not because I went and studied and I've got massive qualifications in art and the thing is you know and what i say to beautiful souls out there like if you're feeling called to pick up a paintbrush if you're feeling called to to um draw or sing or dance do it because why 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 are you holding yourself back yes and there's some saying that comes to my mind is like Imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. Yeah. So, and again, it's not about the technique. And what what I truly believe is we are being asked to step into our own truth, mm -hmm. to tap into our own wisdom pool, to trust ourselves rather than trusting this guru or that guru, trusting this book or reading that book. It's about inquiring knowledge that comes from deep within on yeah. the level of consciousness yes and this goes back to my early days where i was living in the ashram one of the first things i sort of sat for quite a while 
which was this understanding from the Vedic tradition that um, knowledge is structured in consciousness and knowledge is different in different states of consciousness. Mm -hmm. What does that actually mean? It means to me, in essence, we have everything that we need to know within our own field of consciousness. Mm -hmm. But it's allowing that energy to flow, allowing that creativity to flow. And I really, really can't thank you enough for bringing Merlin to life and for bringing Merlin to the centre, to the Awakening Alchemy Retreat Centre mm -hmm. here in Scotland and for enriching the space, enriching us um, with its energy. And this all happened around the same time when we had our Merlin retreat. So even it sort of was it parallel? Mm -hmm. well, it sort of developed parallel. Yeah, it did. To sort of um, invite, or we had a group of people here for a Merlin retreat, which was all about alchemy, um, transforming old belief systems into new patterns, taking on new ideas, creating potions, because it's all about cooking, changing, mm. modifying, alchemizing. And this is what the artwork does and it is very very uh, powerful especially oh one thing can we just ask um carrie to share a bit about the crystals that are in there oh the crystals okay so the crystal mix i can't name all of them no but just yeah just... okay so the crystals the crystal mix that i've used in this painting i was called to use merlinite is definitely one of the main crystals that I was pulled to use. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm repeating myself. And then quartz, selenite, um, shungite. shungite's in there as well. And then there's things like shakite, and then there's purpurite, amethyst. Like every single painting that I've created has an energy and a frequency. And I have used literally every single painting's crystal mix so there's well over 50 i can't i honestly cannot name every single one but there's every single crystal mix that i've used in all my paintings mm -hmm. are literally in this painting and i've added merlinite on top to make it unique so it has that alchemy it has that potion it has everything that needs to be in there Mm -hmm. on a frequency level mm -hmm. but not only that this painting is connected to the Lionsgate painting that I did this painting is connected to the Dragon Column painting it's yeah. connected to all my paintings even right back to my first painting of Philip Joe the Arcturian it's all linked. in here it's mm -hmm. all like fantastic yeah so if people want to get the print of this yes is that possible yes it's possible Print isn't on my website as yet, but it's coming because good. when we created it, we couldn't get an actual good photo of it exactly. to get a print because of the sunlight. I like to get really good pictures of my paintings in the sunlight so you can see the geometry. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get that sorted. So if anybody wants a print of this Merlin painting, they can go to my website and they can join the email list. Can you tell us the website? Uh -huh, www.galartic.com Galartic. Galartic. See what I did there? Yeah. Not galactic. It's no, young and art. Very clever. <laughs> Very clever. Yeah. Okay, so it's G-A-L-A-R-T-I-C. Dot com. Com. And you've got a TikTok account as well. I've got a TikTok account, which I just created. And I'm creating TikToks as much as I can to really talk about who I am. Yes, I think that's one of the things that um, I must admit I have been quiet, pretty much quiet on my own channel for quite a while. It's mainly because, you know, the content that I have on my channel is very much linked to physical well-being. Mm -hmm. But there is another side of me mm -hmm. which is so strong, which is actually the understanding that unless we expand, we grow, we expand in consciousness, physical health is not possible. But I have been procrastinating to actually be myself mm -hmm. and to just sort of talk about that aspect. So this was a wonderful opportunity, Kerry, for me to sort of, 
get back onto the bandwagon. Yeah. It's time, brother. It's time. It's like, you know, it's like challenges all the time. It's like, oh my God, what do I have to say? I haven't got anything to say. Yeah. Like, like I said to everybody here, don't be fearful about picking up a paintbrush. If you're, if you're feeling deep within you, oh, this is my passion and I want to do this passion, then do it. Don't hold yourself back. Because painting was my passion in my younger days. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to get a paintbrush and I'm just going to paint. And then this is what I'm painting now. Yeah. This is what I'm painting now. Never ever hold yeah. yourself back. So never ever hold yourself back, Thomas. Yes, yes. Get on here Get and on. talk about everything that you are and your knowledge and your wisdom because the people out there need it. Yes. Good. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> I am doing another painting. Tell us about it. So I can't say too much about it, okay. obviously. Okay. I can talk about it once it's completed. Okay. But I, obviously this painting is going to be connected into this other painting. Because I work on energies, etc. And um, for those that maybe don't know what an Arcturian is, look it up. It's a star being. So I'm working on a star being painting. The next, mm. Yeah, the next one. It's really cool. There's certain aspects in there that I can't really talk about That's just fine. now because it's it's um yeah until it's out into the collective then I can talk about it. Cool. It's top secret. Top secret. <laughs> top secret painting. I like this. <laughs> hmm. Any questions? Yeah. How do you check the to questions? Get, I don't know. I have to get. I know that. Sorry, can guy. I, can you help us? I have my class. no idea. Interact. Right, hold on. Just bear with us, guys. <laughs> oh no <laughs> i don't think there is any questions no questions sorry. but anyway thank you everybody so much for joining and um yeah for just being here today and for listening to us and listening us babbling along mm -hmm. bubbling or babbling 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 i must say Carrie is just being around Carrie is like a dose of the shits. <laughs> <laughs> a dose of endorphins that rush through your system. Ooh. And it's so healing. And we don't laugh enough. We don't laugh enough in this world, do we? No, we don't. No, that's why it's that's, so refreshing. Yeah, and that's what I'm making my TikToks about. Laughing. Like just being silly. Let your inner child play. You've got to let your inner child play. You've got to. I am not playful. What are you talking about? You are about? playful. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're, caught, you're talking nonsense now. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. We love you and we leave you. <laughs> We're going to hang up, but we don't, don't know how to hang up. How do we hang up? <laughs> you no, hang up. You hang up. No, you hang up. You hang up. <laughs> how do you hang up? How do you hang up? <laughs> Somebody help us! 